Hello everybody, welcome back. I am the Gerbil, and uh, this video is kind of my summative thoughts and feelings on Admiral Radis and Rogue One. If this is helpful, please give me that like and subscribe, or if you've enjoyed my previous vids showcasing the teams. Well, after about 60 or 70 battles, kind of, here's what I'm thinking. All of my matches have been in Arena, which means not Grand Arena, which means no Omicrons. So... Uh, Results are going to be a little bit different than actual life play in Grand Arena, but I think that this gives us a general understanding of where we are. Now, the team I used is the characters at the top of the screen here. I did not use Bayes. Mine is like gear 8, and I am not taking him up there. I did test Chirrut, and I did not like the outcome in any of those situations. So I played all of the matches you see here on the left and in the middle using Biston and Cassian and had fundamentally the same results. I think it may come down to preference overall, I sort of like Cassian more, but Biston might have been more consistent in terms of damage output. And that's a good thing, I suppose. On the right, where it says untested speculating, these are characters that I did not come across in Arena. So I honestly don't know how Radis and team is going to fare against them, but I think it's a safe bet to speculate You know, from my experiences on the other teams. So my thoughts overall is that Radis is a little disappointing, actually. Um, when the kit was initially debuted, I had very high hopes, and I thought that the team was going to be way more powerful than it is. See, when when um, the match starts, Radis gives everybody like plus 60% tenacity, plus 60% uh, potency, and yet they don't seem to land buffs nearly as much as one would expect. Jin's trenching strike does not seem to remove turn meter as much as it should. She frequently, even at 120% crit chance, fails to land a crit on the entire enemy team on her AoE, which pre stops her from reviving anybody. K2, my K2 was pushing 200% tenacity and consistently got debuffed. And that matters because when K2 is not debuffed, when he has no debuffs, he has like a 96% chance to counter strike. And that matters because whenever K2 is taunting um, and he gets a hit, or just whenever he's hit, period, uh, if he's critically hit, Radis inflicts expose on the enemy. And then K2 counterattacks, triggering the expose doing 20% or whatever exposed damage is, which is which is a big place of the damage output in the Radis team. So having K2, even at 200% tenacity, perpetually getting debuffed, completely negates the effectiveness of the exposed Counter-Strike mechanic that I thought was going to be really, really awesome. Now, Baze starts with Counter-Strike, but it's a lot harder to get him to Counter-Strike later once it gets dispelled. He's much less consistent with that. Um, other thoughts on the team. There simply is no damage output. It is an extraordinarily weak team. I don't know how many times that I got to the point where I could um, pop Radis's hope move, which eliminates everybody's protection and gives them like protection block where they cannot gain protection. And the enemy team was in the yellow or red and I would still lose. Um, they just didn't have the damage to complete the job, which is why I put Biston in frequently instead of Cassian. And it was still very inconsistent. Obviously against Empire teams, be it uh, Aiden, uh, Troopers, Palpatine, Vader lead, they were pretty rock solid. I mean, they do their thing against Empire without much problem. But a lot more, a lot of other teams that you'll run across in Territory Wars, especially where the Omicron doesn't work, such as General Grievous, um, it was very, like here, this match could have gone either way. I mean, initially right here at this screenshot, it looks pretty good. But you see, we just, um, we just lost K2. We just lost, I think that was Cassie, and I don't recall, wasn't paying attention. And at this moment, it's really scary. And we got lucky, we did, we got lucky right there in dropping Grievous. He had six stacks of exposed, but in my two or three battles I had with Grievous, I think I won them all. 
it was very, very close. Every single match was very close. Um, Again, CLS, it was 50-50. I played him, I think, four, maybe five times. Uh, I distinctly remember winning twice, losing twice. And it was totally RNG-based. I mean, 100% RNG. Uh, The same team would out absolutely slaughter me or I would go in and they would miss I would dodge or whatever and somehow take the initiative and win so I guess what I'm saying is well we have to R9 Radis and R8 Cassian to unlock the profundity I don't think that you're gonna get a lot of gameplay value out of the characters unfortunately I feel like it's kind of like Phoenix Squad 2.0 right for a long time, the Phoenix ships, Ghost and Phantom, with Wedge and Biggs, were fleet meta for a long time. Um, and even still, those those ships are, well, I don't know about Wedge, but Biggs, Ghost, and Phantom are still solid ships. They're very good. The Rebel fleet is still very, very, very good. I mean, they can beat anybody on offense. I just beat a seven-star maxed executor, like, like 630,000 power. Um, in a GAC match with my Rebels one shot. It was glorious. But with that said, nobody's running Biggs and Wedge much other than a niche case with Mon Mothma. And nobody's running uh, Phoenix anywhere. I mean, not anywhere, right? So I'm, I'm kind of concerned that that's a bit of the case here with the exception that, of course, we do get to destroy Empire with them. But in my experiences, I don't see much Empire on defense anymore. I mean, I do run into Aiden, and this will be, for for a while, this will be my default Aiden counter that I'm going to try. Um, a couple of my guildmates have told me that they've put Radis on defense and have had a lot of holds, and I think that's fabulous. I'm wondering, though, if that's simply because there's a lack of exposure and experience right now. A lot of people just haven't had a chance to play against Radis. And I think that as time pans out and people play versus him more, then they're going to start one-shotting Radis without much trouble. Because he's really not that difficult to get past, right? Every time I beat Revan, it was because Revan, the AI, marked Jin. Uh, had they marked Radis in the start, it would have been game over. Likewise, every time I beat Darth Revan, it was the same situation. Even when Revan, Darth Revan was not the leader, which was a pretty much a much more consistent win, but it was because they didn't death mark Radis. Right? If you take Radis down, the team just dies, uh, and he's really not that tanky. So anyway, my summative feelings: I enjoy playing. I don't think they're very strong. I'm going to go with a B minus overall. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, once again, please give me that like and subscribe, and I will see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.